This is how it starts. The lonely single men narrative has recently gained a lot of traction in the media, framing single men's emotional struggles as a societal crisis. And while there's merit in addressing mental health challenges faced by men, the way this narrative has been portrayed often deflects attention away from deeper systemic issues, namely misogyny. In fact, the crisis isn't even rooted in loneliness, but in outdated gender roles and a culture that often refuses to hold men accountable for their behavior. So immediately we start off with a hasty generalization, making broad claims about the portrayal of the lonely single men narrative in the media without providing specific evidence or examples. And right away, I noticed an issue with the argument. Loneliness? Yeah, pff, who cares about that? That's just a distraction. What we really need to talk about is misogyny and why man bad. So immediately, as we see here, the problem the speaker wants to discuss actually has nothing to do with loneliness whatsoever and is instead used as a veil to cover up the rest of the arguments that follow. So keep in mind that the thesis of the video is misleading. This problematic framing not only skews the discourse, but also enables harmful justifications for male violence, reinforces patriarchal norms, and overlooks the struggles women face, especially within marriage. As I said, it's not that we shouldn't have compassion or sympathy, but where are all the articles for women who are lonely in marriage, or women who are in dangerous marriages, or who are most likely to be hurt or unalive by their domestic partners? Where's all that? The whole narrative in the media that we're seeing is extremely problematic. Throughout much of this video, I'll be applying Hitchens razor. What can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence because we're jumping from one unrelated rationalized thing to the next without supporting it with any concrete evidence. If you, a woman with an underlying contempt for men, approach the idea of a guy sitting alone in his room playing video games and crying because he's alone as something inherently to do with female suffering, you're likely making mental leaps to tie his struggles to your own grievances. Male loneliness and violence aren't inherently connected to women's unhappiness. If you want to know my deep opinion, I think the alienation and loneliness of our time stems from Nietzsche's critique of the death of God. Modernity is nihilistic, and some of the loneliness that we experience, male or female, is a result of not having any divine or spiritual reason to live for beyond your own belief system. It's like we live in a time where all is permitted, nothing really matters which leads to alienation that you never really shrug off. And dating aside, people are just depressed. I don't condone domestic violence either, but when you're alone, you can't be violent towards another person. Because to be alone is not to be in a relationship. Because you're alone. Duh. So one of the most troubling aspects is the media's complicity in the coverage of this. The abundance of stories about men struggling with loneliness suggests a disproportionate focus on their emotional pain which, shocker, is presented as a social emergency. The portrayal of men's loneliness as a societal failure, implying that women should intervene by giving more of themselves, is both misguided and reductive. But worse, it shifts the burden onto women, framing us as responsible for solving men's emotional and relational struggles. Clearly, there are plenty of mainstream articles discussing this topic. You're rationalizing again. Obviously, there are spaces for both men and women to talk about this. Sure, there are some red pillars out there who resent women, but the issue of loneliness isn't exclusive to one gender. Loneliness today is largely a result of our dependence on using the internet to connect to people across the world and the decrease in incentive to go out and meet folks in real life. If I'm being honest, the only reason you're mad about this is because you don't really like men that much. And I'm sorry you feel that way, but if one gender fails, the whole human race does. So as far as I can see, the whole narrative feels like it's being used to groom us back into submission, to rationalize male violence, and empower men to continue doing what they're doing. And at the same time, the media overlooks the far more pressing and lethal issues women face, such as domestic violence. Women are statistically far more likely to be harmed or killed by intimate partners than men are. Like, we don't really talk about how the number one cause of death for pregnant women is being unalived by their partner. A red herring is a fallacy that occurs when someone introduces an irrelevant topic to divert attention from the main issue. In this case, the speaker shifts the discussion from male loneliness to the deaths of pregnant women, which, while serious, doesn't directly address the original narrative about male violence or the issues surrounding male loneliness. Again, the issue I have with this video so far is that it's taking two unrelated topics and forcing them together. If we want to talk specifically about male loneliness, it's more about men not feeling comfortable asking for help or sharing how they feel because it's awkward. Violence against pregnant women is not good and should never happen, of course, but if we're going to talk about related issues, 
I would be more convinced of a connection between specifically male loneliness and incidents like Columbine. Because once you become so convinced and resentful of a world that doesn't care about you, many young men go out there resorting to violence with a bang by killing innocent people. The very thing you claim is overblown partially gets worse because you say this issue is about how much we want to groom women back into submission and not about how being lonely is simply bad for one's mental health and can lead people to suicide. However, stories of women in emotionally abusive or violent marriages like receive a fraction of that attention. The skewed focus on men's loneliness without acknowledging how deeply embedded misogyny affects both men and women reinforces the idea that women are obligated to fix men, often at the cost of our own well-being. Comments such as women could easily solve this, but choose not to, are common, reflecting a broader societal attitude that frames women as selfish for opting out of relationships or traditional gender roles. This is a false dichotomy due to suggesting a binary view where women either have to fix men or be perceived as selfish for not doing so. This oversimplification ignores the complexity of relationships and the various motivations and circumstances that influence women's choices. It reduces the discussion to two opposing options without considering other perspectives or solutions. I understand what she's referring to here. The idea where if men had more awareness of their dating problems, they'd start dating more guys, supposedly solving the male loneliness issue thanks to the increase in relationships. But I think the dynamic comes down to the natural way men and women interact. Women control the reproductive gates and men try to gain access. And it's always been that way. The real issue, though, is the lack of face-to-face -face interaction. Everyone knows that Tinder and other dating apps aren't nearly as effective as, say, going to a book club and getting to know a person who shares the same interest as you. But as I mentioned earlier, modern technology reduces the incentive to engage socially, keeping most of us indoors. If Tinder didn't exist and we had the incentive to go out more, we'd most certainly want to, to develop our interpersonal skills and make friends. Women start conversations less than men do because they don't have to. But Tinder has made it hard for everyone to connect by adding an extra barrier. For women, there are too many DMs coming in, and guys become more and more desperate. And such desperation, if not managed, can make them anywhere from suicidal to downright degenerate and violent. Meanwhile, women are spoiled for choice on the app. That's not to say that the choices are of high quality. Still, you should look at the statistics. It's a shit show. No one is obligated to fix anyone, and I don't think reasonable people are casting blame. This is a collective issue. But what these men are really lamenting is women's refusal to be used for emotional labor and domestic fulfillment. And while the growing independence of women is seen not as a reflection of progress, but as an affront to the male entitlement that has long underpined heterosexual relationships. And this dynamic also ignores the fact that men have the power to solve many of the problems they face. All of us face, actually. Um, for instance, they could take steps to create emotionally supportive, equitable partnerships or work on their own mental health and personal growth. Yet, as we know, many choose not to preferring to hold women accountable for their loneliness. Okay, I partially agree with this. I advocate for men being more emotionally supportive of each other. And I often talk about my problems with friends online. I'm more sensitive than most. And sometimes I feel embarrassed to share my issues outright, which is a problem in itself. But again, the way this video frames the issue is just misguided. The real problem lies with those deeply embedded in the red pill mindset. Many of them will eventually move past it and become well-rounded, but reasonable men will always hold themselves accountable for their own actions first over others. Anybody can make the same argument. This particular part of the essay is an appeal to consequences, implying that men's refusal to take accountability for their issues is not only a personal failing, but also an affront to women's independence. This shifts the focus away from the individual actions and decisions men could take, framing their situation as a moral issue rather than a complex interplay of social dynamics. What about female entitlement? Is that not a good thing? Now, these toxic women are fewer than the red pill wants you to believe, but wanting a guy with six figures over six feet tall is a dating preference that to some sounds very entitled. Also, the media's failure to critically examine this victim-blaming rhetoric plays directly into the hands of misogynists who see women's refusal to acquiescence as a threat to their dominance. In this context, the sympathy given to lonely men takes on a more insidious tone. It's not just about understanding their pain, but about reinforcing the patriarchal power structures that allow men to feel entitled to women's emotional and physical labor. This, in turn, fosters a climate where male violence is rationalized as an inevitable outcome of women's independence, rather than a failure of men to engage in healthy emotional regulation. I don't feel entitled to women's emotional or physical labor at all. I'm in a healthy relationship, and it takes effort from both sides. We both have to communicate and appreciate each other. 
especially when we face problems about whose solutions we feel very different. This rigid adherence to ideology blinds people. Two people who are compatible will define their own relationship dynamic. If one couple prefers a traditional setup where the man does masculine things and the woman does feminine things, why does it matter? And if the roles are reversed, or have some kind of nuance to them, with the woman working more while the man stays at home, who cares? Don't we live in an age where love is love? I can't think of any mainstream narrative that condones violence against women. Seriously, none. Only crazy people think that, so please don't gaslight guys for wanting to even talk about the issue. I think that you should actually look into what's being said, instead of making blanket statements writing off the issue as a whole. At the heart of the lonely single men discourse is a profound rejection of women's autonomy and consent. Many men struggle to accept that women have the right to define the terms of their relationships and lives. When women express their needs, whether it's the desire for emotional support, shared responsibilities, or simply to be treated as equals, they're often dismissed as overreacting or crazy. And this reaction reveals a deeper discomfort with the idea that women are full, autonomous individuals who have the right to say no. Relationship. The way in which two or more people or things are connected, or the state of being connected. Notice the key word. Two. There are two people in a relationship meaning both are involved in defining the terms. It's not about discomfort with autonomous women. The real issue arises when one person dictates all the ground rules. In any healthy relationship, decision-making should be mutual, not one-sided. The expectation that women should solve men's loneliness further emphasizes this dynamic. It assumes that women's emotional labor should be given freely and without question. Men who refuse to change or grow often view relationships as spaces where their needs should be prioritized, while women's needs are secondary or irrelevant, which is why divorce is becoming a more common thing. As a result, men expect emotional care without ever reflecting on their own behavior or the toll it takes on their partners. Statistically, four out of five divorces are initiated by women. Are you suggesting that men feel lonely because they can't meet a woman's needs? The way you frame this entire video doesn't seem to focus on equality at all, actually. Your idea of an ideal relationship sounds more like one where a woman takes control of everything while the man stays silent and lets her make all the decisions. Is that what you want? If so, I vehemently disagree with that perspective. Male loneliness is not only for women to solve, it's a human race issue. And anyone talking about female loneliness should be attuned to that as well. I would actually like to know more about it. The world is complex, and a one-size-fits-all solution doesn't work without at least accounting for nuance and one's ability to understand what every circumstance requires. Every relationship has different needs based on its unique circumstances. A healthy partnership obviously requires confidence in the other to be there during difficult times. But instead of relying on assumptions or guessing what the other person wants through self-reflection, why not emphasize open communication and stop with the blaming? Working together towards a shared future is key. Another central issue is the denial that many men engage in regarding their own role in perpetuating their loneliness. Rather than reflecting on why their relationship may have failed, many men prefer to live in denial, refusing to change or grow. They blame external factors, often women themselves, for their struggles. Rather than acknowledging their own actions or shortcomings, this refusal to take responsibility reinforces harmful patterns, leading to repeated cycles of failed relationships and emotional stress. I feel like I could take the word man here and replace it with woman. Another central issue is the denial that many women engage in regarding their own role in perpetuating their loneliness. Rather than reflecting on why their relationship may have failed, many women prefer to live in denial, refusing to change or grow. They blame external factors, often men themselves, for the struggles, rather than acknowledging their own actions or shortcomings. This refusal to take responsibility reinforces harmful patterns, leading to repeated cycles of failed relationships and emotional stress. As many women have gained more autonomy and rights over the years, many men have clung to traditional gender norms resisting change, and the idea that men should evolve emotionally, take accountability, and build equitable partnerships is deeply threatening to those who see masculinity as fixed and superior. Instead of viewing relationships as partnerships, they continue to see them as spaces where their needs come first, and if women don't conform, then we are cast as villains in a narrative of male victimhood. Relationships are partnerships. I agree with you. I don't see where you need to conform. Are you talking about a specific subgroup of men who want a trad wife? Well, then don't go for that guy. Find the guy who fits you. He's out there, and we will want to work with you as long as you do the same. There's not a crisis of lonely single men. There's a crisis of men not healing and working on themselves. There is not a crisis of lonely single men. There is a crisis of men trying to uphold outdated gender norms and patriarchal constructs. 
there is a crisis of men playing the victim and not taking accountability or having self-awareness that they're part of the problem. There is a crisis of men objectifying women, seeing us as objects and not people. There is a crisis of men not being able to express their emotions in a way that makes women feel safe. So now we have an argument from repetition. The phrase, there is not a crisis of lonely single men, is repeated multiple times, which does not strengthen the arguments. Instead, it may serve to emphasize the speaker's viewpoint without providing substantial evidence or reasoning to support it. Repetition alone does not constitute a strong argument. Moreover, the idea that the crisis does not exist is just factually not true. There is a crisis of lonely men, and the issue doesn't disappear into thin air because you change the definitions. If they were not healing and working on themselves, an entire subculture on the internet wouldn't dedicate itself to looks maxing, mewing, self-improvement, and working out. I mean, I think it gets a little toxic sometimes, but the idea that all men who are lonely just sit there in a room all day doing nothing is absolutely ridiculous and shows a lack of research. There is a crisis of men who are not creating equitable partnerships. There is a crisis of men wanting mothers and not partners. There is a crisis of men wanting to take ownership of women and seeing us as property. There is a crisis of men wanting women to take on the majority of emotional labor and domestic labor because misogyny, the patriarchy, and everything that women have experienced, this crisis has been going on a long time. It's caused by generational trauma and it's taken lives. And all the while, women continue to work on themselves and have self-awareness to heal and grow. So the problem you're running into is that you've watched too many clips of red pillars calling women sociopaths, wanting a wife to completely submit to them in all forms. And that's just too much for me personally. My problem is that your entire essay is a loose string of feces without any real evidence to back it up. It just sounds like you feel women want to work on themselves and men don't. That's not true. That's such a hasty generalization that no one taking your argument in good faith is going to believe. Antisocial women are known to engage in behaviors such as reputation destruction. There are also gold diggers who marry specifically for a man's money. Can I say that they are all collectively working on themselves? Definitely not. The way you should frame the issue should be more empathetic and make it more about the actual problem instead of projecting a different one onto it, investigating yourself, and then all of a sudden claiming that you're innocent. You and only you are solely responsible for ensuring that you don't feel lonely outside of a relationship before you can ever be emotionally healthy enough to be in a relationship. And what we as women learned a long time ago is to grow and heal the parts of ourselves that are stunted. And I think we can all collectively agree that we're sick and tired of being blamed for men's behavior. So maybe let's change the way that we frame this. Be careful when you claim to speak for all women. There are many historical arguments to be made here. Women are not all the same. I mean, this might be a little hard to believe nowadays, but when the women's suffrage movement was a thing 100 years ago, there were plenty in opposition to suffrage because they thought that it would incite chaos in the culture. Not that I agree with them, but again, when you say things such as, we as women learned this a long time ago, I'm not convinced that you can speak for all women, not even close. I'm well aware there are men who are watching this video not agreeing with me right now. So if I were to say I'm speaking for all men or that we learned something a long time ago, I think I would sound like I'm making a hasty generalization. A lot of women from many different generations have dated or been married to these men who are dying alone, okay? So women know a thing or two about these guys. They're our fathers, our ex-husbands, our brothers. Whoever they are, we know a lot of them. And half the time when we have these conversations with them, we're just like, okay, so you're saying you're alone or even that you're lonely, but what are you doing to be better than the last time? And a lot of the time, the answer is nothing. They just keep finding women in these patterns, destroying the relationships, and then it starts all over again. No, 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 no. The issue is men who never get into relationships. Have you not seen the crisis of male virginity? These men who kill themselves have never been in a relationship ever. Like, dude, that's such an unfair comparison. And might I add that the majority of the male friends I have are pretty interested in becoming better versions of themselves. Just because you do the right thing does not mean you will be rewarded for it. And clearly, in many cases, they're not. Of course, to have a healthy relationship, you need to work on yourself. And if you do, you will surely find the right person if you hold out and put yourself out there. Hopefully. And it's a deep denial and abstinence because... It's like they don't understand that they actually should change because they're raised to believe that nothing is essentially wrong and that as a man, they're entitled to a certain way of life. And if they don't get it, then they have an ax to grind with everybody else. And it's like society suffers for it. And as women, it's like, how are we supposed to have that much sympathy for the same people who continue to hurt us in different relationships throughout our lives? There's a reason a lot of these people are alone. And we should also sympathize with the women and the people that they hurt.
Victim blaming rhetoric. Victim blaming rhetoric. Victim blaming rhetoric. I think this last section proves to me that you don't care at all about any man who speaks out about loneliness. I already know the logic that some may even use against me, that I am contributing to the erasure of women's experiences. But two things. One, we are one race of people. And two, this entire video was made with the intent of reminding us of how men will never change and that we don't have any incentive to care about their problems as a result of the many people they leave traumatized dismissively generalizing men's behavior and portraying them as inherently entitled while offering very little room for nuance. Personally, I'm very tired of the us versus them narrative and wish ideas like this would leave room for an actual discussion so we don't end up hating each other. I, for example, do sympathize with both women who've been in toxic relationships and the men who are struggling to get a date because they're not inherently in the same category. So, regarding your own personal experiences, I'm sorry you've dealt with whoever hurt you, and any other woman who may have had bad experiences with men who are also watching my video right now. I've certainly had my fair share of bad relationships where I was a part of the problem, but so were they. I've since moved on, hopefully changed, but instead of blaming them for all my issues, I actually realized that at times I was a very crappy person. It happens to all of us. It'll probably still happen that you make a bad choice and hurt someone, but the way to fix that in most cases is communication, not blaming. If you're looking for a guy who wants to reflect on these issues, I hope to be an example for you. Because I don't condone violence, and neither do I want men or women to hate each other. In the end, it's not men versus women. It's a dynamic interplay whose nuance we should always keep in mind.